you get asked, what do you do? If you're like me, it's all the freaking time. And the problem with this is that, quite frankly, a lot of us really suck at explaining what we do. You know how it is, you may have found this when, when, when you're unable to deliver really effective elevator speech. It's important because if you can't, you stand there and you explain what you do and then the other person's eyes sort of glaze over. They go, ah, oh, interesting. And the conversation starts to spiral and they start making these furtive glances towards the nearest exit. But when done well, it can create a really awesome conversation, you know, really animated, you feel like you really get to know the person. And it's also, it's a great way to make an excellent first impression, as we know, you can't get those back. And finally, it's a really great opportunity for you to share your message with someone else and share with them what you want. For example, maybe you want to find more customers, more clients. Maybe you're looking for a job. Maybe you want to move up in your company. Or maybe you simply want to share something that you're passionate about. Whatever it is, an effective elevator pitch is a really good way for you to make this happen. So today I'd like to share with you three main ways that you can start to create a really strong elevator pitch. And I suggest that you write these down I see some people already getting their pens up, fantastic. Because this is something that you can use anytime. In social situations, business situations, you can even start to implement it, practice it when we're having our break a little bit later. I'll come around and ask you all of this. So the first thing that you can do is to never leave your occupation naked. Write that down. Never the naked occupation. How many times have you said or have heard someone say, I'm a, but one, and leave like a one word or two word title. I was asking for business cards before because this is a classic thing that people do in their business cards. Solutions architect, managing director, commercial manager, right? I'm not picking on, on the people whose cards these are, but just because your company has given you that one word title on your card or on your email signature does not define what you do and the value that you bring to other people. And besides, those titles, what do they even mean? Oh, I'm a project manager. What does that even mean? I'm a, a quantitative analyst. What does that even mean? Right? You want to actually give someone something to grab onto so they can continue the conversation. So what I suggest is that you can use your title, say I'm a project manager, and then go on and explain the actual project that you're working on. Right? Or if, say, I'm mean, used to be an architect, I could say something like, I'm an architect, did you know that this building actually uses this cool type of material in the ceiling? Right? Some, some sort of interesting fact that the other person can go, oh really, that's interesting, and actually lead on to a conversation from there. Leave one word title, it's very difficult for the conversation to continue. The second thing that I'd like to share with you is to explain who you help and why you help them. Who you help and why you help them. And there's a really simple formula for this. I help blank do blank. Yeah? So for example, an accountant could say, I'm an accountant, I help small businesses sort out their finances so they're not stressed for tax time. Right? Adds on something interesting, shows who they're helping. And then if I'm a small business owner, I'm going to go, oh, you could help me with my finances, with my tax. Right? So that enables that person you're speaking to to relate to it when you can share who you help and who you help and what you help them with. And you can make this intriguing, like extra intriguing. It doesn't even have to be specific. So for example, a specific one for me, I always tend to say, I help people be more effective at public speaking. Right? To the point, really obvious. And then I thought, maybe I could say something like, I help people overcome their deepest fear. Right? then that, someone's going to go, Ooh, what is that? I have a photographer friend who says, I help people celebrate what's most important in their lives. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. So you can make it kind of fun, you can make it a bit intriguing so that people want to ask more questions, right? This is all about having a great conversation. The final thing that I'd like to share with you today is to eliminate jargon. So I work at a co-work space up the road on Burke Street and I once asked a guy there, I said, what do you do? He said, 
I'm a systems integration architect and working on large scale transformational projects. And I said, so, okay, so to someone who's not in your industry, what do you say? And he said, he thought for a moment, and he goes, I'm a former ski racer with a bad back. <laughs> and I was like, all right. He could not even explain what he did without using jargon. But there is a way that you can, and this is how you do it. Like one thing I find that really helps is to actually ask a question that relates to what you do, that's relatable in a day-to-day -day context. So you can say, do you know when you see blank? Well, I do the blank that does blank. Right? But you've got to ask that qualifying question first. I'll give you an example. I have a friend who actually is a quantitative analyst, and I asked him, what is that? What do you, what do, you do? I don't, I don't even know what that is. And he said, okay, well, you know when you go to the bank to get a home loan? I said, yeah. He said, well, all your information goes into the system, and then I work on the mathematical algorithm behind that system that determines whether or not you get the home loan. I'm like, ah, okay. I get that, right? So something you can do is ask a qualifying question. Do you know when you go to blank? You know when you see blank? Yeah, well I do the blank, right? And so, but you gotta make sure that they understand, right? You can't just assume that people know. Some people may not know what it is like to go and get a home loan. So you gotta keep sort of, sounds wrong, but dumbing it down, right, until the person actually understands it. And if I still don't get it, just say, I sell guns and drugs to children and walk away. <laughs> so I hope that that's been of some help for you today. Those are three ways that you can start to create a really strong effective eleva elevator pitch. One important thing with this is that you do need to practice it. Okay, I run entire workshops just based on this. And what I do is I get people up, practicing, talking to people, saying it over and over and over again. Because the fact is when you're out and about, the question, what do you do? Boom, comes up like that. You can't, you can't go, oh, just hang on a sec, what am I going to say again? Do I do that? You have to like say it straight away. So practice it over and over again, practice it tonight when we're out there. And you'll be well on your way to having less awkward conversations. And hey, you may even get an opportunity, job, or a client out of it. Thank you very much.